Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak, your adventure guide. Do uh, you remember when you were in, in high school or in college and, and you'd be going to the most boring, terrible class in the world, and then at some point you would raise up your hand and say, Teacher, when are we going to need this in real life? Well, that's the whole purpose of our radio show is to figure out what we really need to know in real life. And our guest, Brad Jolie, believe it or not, has the answer to that question. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just remember being in... in, uh, in social studies and in math classes and biology classes and raising me, my hand and asking the teacher, when are we going to need this in real life? But I found out that probably the most important thing I need uh, is math. Uh, what I needed to, I was a CPA. People think I'm brilliant at math because I do a lot of numbers, but really my computer does all that kind of work. I just do the legal part of it, I guess. But, but where math really comes in handy in my life uh, uh, is, is golfing. Uh, frankly, sometimes I need a, a, a doctorate in math to keep to keep this, my score. It gets so out of hand. And if you ever if you ever plot my my golfing on a, on a map, like on my on my uh, Garmin watch, it, it, it'll show me after I'm done golfing all the different places I hit the ball. You know, you don't just need algebra to compute my score, but you need geometry to figure out where in the heck my my ball went. Well, I had I had a really interesting conversation with our guest today, Brad Jolie. Uh, I was speaking up in the Denver area, and I believe on the way to the airport, uh, he gave me a Colorado coffee coffee mug. By the way, go go Colorado Buffaloes, man! Uh, they did great last weekend. We when we recorded the show, they're doing great in football, and uh, and we have Brad Jolie with us as a guest. He's a Catholic convert. He's a happy the, the happy fact that is largely due to the remarkable patience of his holiness of his wife of 37 years. She's becoming she's suffering for Jesus. He has four uh, wonderful adult children, and he's a math teacher. He's, a, he's he loves math, computer, and he's a geek. Basically, and I was thinking about this yesterday. How, man, we need geeks. You know, you know what? The thing about geeks is that they run with their with their the, I hate to say with their passion, with their desire. They run with it. So, like when I went to college, I learned to be a CPA, and I got myself a good business and a good job. And I do really, frankly, I enjoy it. But someone who loves math and physics and quantum physics and quarks they're all kind of quirky and the reason why is because they're running with something that has just grabbed their attention uh, and in fact they're almost like artists and and so we have with us today brad jolie and we're going to talk about math and why you uh what you really need to know to know in your real life actually we want to talk about math because it's it's the grandeur of god it's part of his intelligent design so Brad Jolie, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Well, hey, thanks, Bear. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned golf earlier. I, <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I, I almost broke 80 once. You did? I, uh, oh, yeah, I would have, in fact, if it had not been for that windmill in front of the clown's mouth. That's oh, that's, really, yeah, that's difficult. That, that, yeah, that uh, always gets me that. too. I mean, like I'll be having a great game, get to the last hole, and then you just you just lose it. You know, it takes you twenty <laughs> strokes to get through that. I will say though, no, I've actually never golfed, but my first job <laughs> as a kid was caddying. No kidding. And uh, yeah, and I I was actually able to uh, use math in that right when you're trying to get yardages for your yeah your golfers. Uh, I remember one time I actually was caddying in a uh, professional tournament. And um, it was the Buick Open, and my golfer asked me how far it was to the hole, and I did a little math, a little bit of trig, and I gave him a yardage, and he said, are you sure? And I uh, said, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And he put it uh, 18 inches from the cup and tapped in for an eagle. So All right. That was my, All right. That was my one and only uh, great golf story. Well, I, 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 used a lot, I used a lot of math. Um, you know, when I was young, I was working for Deloitte. 
Touche uh, down there in El Paso, and we were doing a, uh, a ranch, a huge ranch, one of the biggest cattle ranches in all of Mexico. And uh, we had, at some point, they put us rookies into what they called the bullpen, and we had to count uh, cow, uh, cow, cows. They took aerial photographs, and we'd put a pinhole in each cow's head. And when I asked, I asked the, uh, the, the manager in charge, how do we count these cows? I mean, because we take samples by the square footage or what do we do and he goes oh no that's easy you count their legs and you divide by four so so that's basically the only that's the only cpa joke probably that there is but that that's the cpa i'll be glad you weren't counting centipedes (laughs) so you know the thing is is when you get into geometry and things like that you do think a little bit about plato's forms you know and 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 the the beauty of that 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 world that's up in the sky you know it's so much of math is not like right down here on earth it's something that's 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 more in our minds than than really you know uh, um you know in concrete form but before we get started on the whole beautiful joyful exciting thrilling realm of math um you're a dangerous man what makes you dangerous is that you're a convert so how did that happen well um let's see when i was a uh, kid we'd go to uh church sometimes but it wasn't always regular and i was kind of iffy on the whole thing uh my parents tried but then i had some good examples but i was kind of iffy on it and i was always into math and science and uh as you know if you've got science you don't who needs god right uh, you know science explains so everything. insane now, isn't, course, it? isn't that insane yeah I, I i no longer believe that but i I thought that, you know, in science, you can prove things, right? And uh, you can do experiments. And uh, when I started college, I uh, I went to the University of Michigan, and I thought I wanted to major in particle physics. And boy, that was interesting. That's an interesting field. And uh, when I was a kid at Michigan, one of the uh, big questions was around proton decay. Do protons decay or not? I have always you know? wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, do, I used right? to always read on the back of cereal boxes when I was a kid at breakfast trying to find the answer there. Just couldn't find it. I always wondered yeah. about that. Okay, you guys, get ready. This could be a thrilling ride today. Yeah, and, uh, and and so I thought, you know, you know, that seemed like an interesting question at the time, and and it is, right? But uh, no more thrilling a question than that. <laughs> it was a big area of research, and I thought that might be something I was interested in doing. And uh, the more I got into the, the physics and the, the math, the more I was convinced that there's really no need for God. You know, you can, you can find everything through, through science, uh, or so I thought. And I remember, in fact, in one of my uh, physics books, at the end, they uh, quoted something from this guy named Aquinas. And who the heck is this yeah. guy anyhow? He's not even a <laughs> physicist. What could he possibly know, right? And um, Those guys were was... smart, aren't they? <laughs> and uh, so, and they were kind of making fun of it, though, because oh. the assertions Aquinas wasn't making, uh, was making, rather, weren't the kinds of things you could put under a microscope exactly. and, uh, and test, right, and experiment with. And so Aquinas was nothing but kind of a foil for mockery. And uh, the kind of knowledge that he claimed to have was just silly and, and kind of crazy. So I, uh, in college, I was kind Boy, of... Boy, they, they, uh, pick, they picked on the wrong kid on the block, dude. Well, no, they <laughs> picked on the right kid on the block because I totally bought it. I totally bought it. I thought, there, well, there's, this is silly. There's nothing here. Um, and uh, I took some time off halfway through my junior year. Uh, took a couple of years off, started my own business. Uh, that's when I started dating my, uh, what well, the the woman who would become my wife was when I was uh, about 21 years old. And uh, she's a cradle Catholic, thanks be to God, and comes from a, a wonderful Catholic family. And um, when I looked at my transcript, I said, you know, I've, I've had as much math as I have physics. And frankly, I, I'm enjoying the, the math a lot more. The physics is nothing more than a big book of story problems problems on which to uh, do math. And so if I was honest with myself, I was actually enjoying the math more than the physics. Well, obviously, so of went, course, the math is so much more fun. <laughs> well, I thought so. <laughs> and uh, so I, I uh, we got engaged, and uh, she made me promise to raise the kids Catholic. 
and I wasn't quite sure all what all that entailed, but I thought, okay, yeah, that I, I can do that. She she it seems to be important to her. She's wonderful. Um, her family's wonderful, and so yeah, I, I can promise to do that. And I didn't really understand all that entailed, but I I thought, yeah, I can commit to that. And so I always took that very seriously. I went to uh, mass with with Kelly every week, uh, every Sunday, and. Uh, we, uh, when we had kids, uh, I remember taking our oldest one and uh, Kelly and I went to uh, the local school and said, so this child's already reading going into kindergarten, what are you going to do? And they said, well, nothing. Our, our goal is to get them ready to, uh, to start reading as they enter into first grade. And I thought, well, that doesn't seem good. I mean, that they're I mean, I understand why they want to make sure everybody's able to do that, but for kids that are already reading, they're not doing anything. So we went to the local Catholic school and met oh, let, with the let, principal. Let, let, let's take a break right there. That's yeah. This will be a good break, a good, yep. a good, a good pause because, uh, yeah, I remember my 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 early days. I got to go to a Catholic go go to Catholic school. I had a crush on my on my first grade teacher, Sister Maria Madonna. Actually, <laughs> we'll be right back with our guest, um, math prodigy. Brad Jolie and uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Dudes and dudettes, uh, mama bears and men, I got to let you know the new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is is out. And uh, you can get it through your local bookstore, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Catholic Catholic bookstores, Amazon.com, the deepadventure.com website, and, uh, of course, Sophia, our publisher. It's a great book for women to, to read. I think especially young women should read this book so they, they, uh, it crystallizes for them in their thoughts what, what kind of a man they really want to find and be with. But it, it's a great book for, for men to read and for men to read with their sons or even for a single mom to read with, with their sons. Uh, I think it's meant to inspire all of us to, uh, to uh, really understand the nature of man. Remember, the word for, for man in the Latin is ver, V-I-R, which is the root word for virtue. And so if you want to be manly, 
if you want to know the rules for manliness, uh, the book uh, focuses on how practical application, like a father to a son or a brother to a brother, what it means to really be a man. So go to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, or go to wherever you want and buy the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? If you go to our site, our site you can let us know who you want to gift it to also. So our guest today is Brad Jolie. He's a math aficionado, uh, and uh, he actually loves math, everyone. And I just think anybody that really loves math uh, is obviously the, the first person we want to have on our show. I know it sounds really boring, but actually, uh, when you get with someone with like, someone like uh, Brad, you find out really the, the wonder of God's design. And so we're going to dig into that. But you were saying, so you had a... You were you were you were going to be going taking your child to public school, and it was almost like they were gonna, you know, you got to put the brakes on their education. We got to dumb them all down, and everyone's got to be, you know. And so, what happened? So we went to the local Catholic school and met with the principal there. Entirely different conversation. Entirely different conversation. He talked about the uniqueness of each child. He used words that we had never heard before, like human flourishing, for example. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. he, the importance of all that, and the importance of developing the child spiritually as well as academically, right? And mm-hmm. and of course, it was academically excellent as well, uh, but that wasn't the main focus. It was a focus to be sure, but the main focus was on uh, serving the ultimate good of the child, right? And it was very attractive. And all four of our kids went through Catholic school, K-12, and uh, we were um, just delighted by that experience. Uh, and and that was a big part of my own conversion i came into the church at age 50 um and i i had a lot of good friends along the way who kind of helped me along and and helped uh pray for me and of course uh my wife and uh, her family were were praying for me frequently uh but what really helped, I always tell people I'm a product of Catholic schools never having gone to one. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I saw what happened in Catholic schools, right? And that, that beautiful example of the the teachers and the principals and the other parents. And gosh, I was uh, uh, blown away by it. And uh, so I've been volunteering in the Catholic schools since the, the mid-90s, uh, doing math education, doing... Uh, uh, teacher training at the uh, at the archdiocesan level, uh, volunteering in the local schools, and uh, just really uh, benefiting from it. I, I I always learn more when I talk to to kids than they learn from me. Yeah, um, it's it's been interesting, but that's not my profession. So my my profession uh, is in the engineering business uh, in well, the wait, electronics. Wait, wait, wait. I want I want to yeah. go back to this. So uh, before yeah, uh, maybe sure. maybe that's where you're going. So what, what, what was the actual moment of conversion? Is that where you're going with this? Well, um, when did you make that? When did you cross that line? So there was, a, a, I kept getting closer and closer and closer, right? As we'd call it in math, uh, an asymptote, getting closer and closer and closer to it. But I knew I never wanted to be a cafeteria Catholic. Mm. It either all hangs together or it doesn't. Mm. And you can't be 96.3% right, and then the other 3% you can just throw away. Well, that, that's whatever. the essence of a lie. It's truth, well, yeah, is, is right. truth mingled with a, with, a, with a little falsehood. So you're that's absolutely right. right. You, you can't be a cafeteria Catholic. And I, I knew I didn't want to be that. And so even though I was probably 98% there 20 years earlier, I, I didn't want to be 98%, right? And so I had to work through a lot of stuff. And probably the final push was a, a friend of mine uh, had a wonderful and beautiful presentation on the Shroud of Turin. Mm. And boy, that appealed to the science guy. Right, right? yes. Because there's a lot of stuff in there that is way beyond what science can talk about. We're gonna, be, we're gonna have a guest on soon that we're gonna really go into deep on that, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, right? And so uh, that was probably the final thing where I said, okay, this is... I, had had I you read the catechism? Get... Had you read the catechism yet? I hadn't read the whole thing, but I'd read many parts of it, and I'd been in a book club uh, with, with a group of guys that met faithfully every uh, once a month for uh, many, many, many years. Oh, that is uh, so years. cool. And that was a big part of it, right? Having the, the other men in your life uh, who are 
really good, solid, manly examples mm-hmm. of, as you would say, virtue, right? As you just mm-hmm. talked about. Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of virtuous guys that uh, helped me along the that, way as that, well. That, that's the beauty of, of, I think, the Catholic faith is that, uh, yes, I accept all of the teaching of the church, but I will have to say, I came there by reading the, cat, the, the essential, the catechism is so much a mixture of theology and philosophy that uh, that uh, everything makes sense. It all fits together. You know, you, you may have to read it through a second or third time, but you when you read it all the way through the catechism, you're just in awe. You know, of the of how yeah, well if that's true, then this must be true. You know, the syllogism there. Well, be, mm-hmm. be, now now so. Did you ever get back on the the Aquinas Aquinas bus, or don't you love it when Augustine talks about time? I mean, did you get did you ever get back to full circle back to Aquinas? That's my question. So let's go to a. So I've read some of Aquinas uh, and I enjoy it, but you mentioned Augustine. So Augustine mm. is in fact my confirmation saint, mm. right? Um, you know, late have I loved you, right? And uh, and and his stuff on time. He was fifteen hundred. It's years mind blowing. Ahead. Yeah, he was 1500 years ahead of of Nobel Prize winning physicists in the early 20th century. Absolutely. Who weren't clear on the fact that space and time uh, had a beginning. Right. And he was very clear on that. And in fact, he makes an interesting little joke. Uh, He says people will often ask, you know, well, what was God doing uh, before he created the the universe? And the answer was he was doing nothing because he didn't have the time. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and and it's quite true. I mean, literally, now, of course, God in eternity. God, God's time, outside of right? time. Right. He God's right, of outside course, of yeah. time. Yeah. But uh, the, the idea of before uh, creation doesn't really make sense. Uh, I, w- I prefer to think of it as from the state in which he, he created. But mm-hmm. it's not necessarily before because you really can't have a before until you have time. And, of right. course, God being outside of time. Um you really I don't have that. So I love when he talks about well, what is the what is what? How do you define now? And it, yeah. it took, it took pages and pages. It basically, by the time you, even while you're saying the word now, yeah, that now has already passed. Or what, where did it go? You know. So it's so that the, the the but the essence of that type of conversation that he was having is this sort of ethereal uh, sort of uh, element of math. You know, it's it's, oh, it's up and you know, like talk. About, we got a, a couple minutes. I know you're a you're a math guy more than a physics physics guy. But when you think about Plato's forms, and you think about geometry and trigonometry and algebra, it's all a bunch of formulas up there in the sky, really. Oh, absolutely. So I always like to uh, shock kids and and their teachers sometimes when I say, you know, triangles don't exist in the physical world. And they're like, well, wh- what do you mean they don't exist? Look, here, I, I draw one, right? And they draw one, and I go, well, is that really a triangle? I said, if we zoomed in on it, would the lines have any width to them? Well, yeah, they would have width. Well, does a an actual triangle have any width, or is it just line segments that have no width? Oh, yeah, yeah I guess not, right? And so... Well, if triangles don't exist in the physical world, and, and neither do circles or squares or anything else, and yet we can reason about them, where do they exist, right? They, they, they exist in this non-physical realm outside of space and time. Another great question I like to ask is, it, it, when did the Pythagorean theorem become true? It, did it become true on the date that Pythagoras first proved it? Did it become true when the Babylonians were using examples of it without a proof? Or has it always been true? And if so, if it's always been true, then it must have existed always. Well, if something always exists, hmm, was it true on the, uh, you know, five seconds after the Big Bang? Yes, it was, of course, right? And so that's where you start getting into the... Or was it true be five seconds before? Well, of course, well, again, yeah, there is no such thing as five seconds because before right, the Big because Bang, it's a, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's in the mind no, of God. Yeah, right. Well, we got, so we got, we got to take thing. a break, Brad. Okay, so yeah. now we're really getting into the subject. So, yeah. we're talking with math uh, prodigy Brad jo- Jolie, jo- Jolly or Jolie? I want to say Jolie. Jolly, Jolly, like Santa. Uh, like Santa. Uh, you got to grow that that white beard a little bit more. 
talking with, with Brad. We're going to go into really the beauty and the glory of, of, uh, of God as revealed in math. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan with the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Wits. Rudyard Kipling wrote, If you can keep your wits about you while all others are losing theirs and blaming you, the world will be yours and everything in it. What's more, you'll be a man, my son. Kind of the opposite of being at one's wits end, which causes being scared out of one's wits. Then there's living by your wits, or not. As a lad, too often I didn't use my wits, like blindly following a friend intent on burglarizing a tavern. But all in all, life somehow left me with the kind of wits I was able to keep about myself when danger confronted. Like the time I was fighting my way across a massive windswept glacier lake in the Kitlope Wilderness, with the teenage heiress of the Levi Strauss family in the back of my canoe. Hadn't been in a canoe for years. I vigorously paddled on like I was a veteran of canoeing in such storms. Or when a monster size of a man, a wife abuser from across our street, chased his bloodied wife into our home with knife in hand. Keep in mind, I'm five foot eight, in my cowboy boots at 190 pounds. Had to use my wits given my comparatively limited brawn. Jesus is our leader in this business of wits. With clear-headedness, he faced down religious mobsters and trudged through blood, sweat, and tears, completing his main task at hand. That's why the writer of Hebrews exhorted us to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In doing so, you'll keep your wits about you in times of trouble. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You want to invite the Mama Bears to come to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Mama Bears. You get access to a one-year curriculum on the virtues. You get access uh, to all of the Long Ride Home series, which is airing now the fourth season, all filmed in Hawaii on EWTN, our motorcycle TV series. And uh, the access to all of my a whole two and a half years of uh, daily 15-minute uh, teachings right out of the catechism. We go line by line through the catechism. And men, if you join Bear's Man Cave, you also have access to those same things. Plus, you have access to the non-Facebook community, the Man Cave, where you can participate with other men, uh, and challenge each other, encourage each other. And we have a three-year curriculum called the School of Manliness, which we go through one chapter at a time, one month at a time of that uh, as men together. But you can lead your your sons through that as well. Your confirmation age sons can can uh, have their own login for the School of Manliness. They can't be part of the man cave. That's just for adult men. But check out our website, deepadventure.com. Become a mama bear. Uh, become a member of the man cave and help, also help support our ministry. You know, our, our ministry is 100% uh, funded by 
by you. Uh, so we, we, if you if you love our ministry, please support us. We appreciate it. Our guest today is Brad Jolie. We're talking about the, really the wonder of math, and and you know you talk about you talked about it Cal, how in the Catholic school when you brought your your, your oldest child to the to to start school there, the priest talked about human flourishing. And then you, t- you mentioned to me raising the angle of elevation to the ultimate goal, which is eternity with God. What do you mean by human flourishing and, and, uh, yeah. and how math yeah, a, brings you there? So our kids got wonderful educations in Catholic school. We were very, very happy about that. But when I talk to kids in, in uh, whether it's Catholic or public school, I say, so why do we do math anyhow? And I get a, a bunch of good answers. Well, I want to be an engineer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an accountant. I want to run a business. I want to be an architect, right? All of these things are good, but they're all, all very horizontal, meaning that if you just stand stand uh, up and spin in a circle and look around and say, what do people do all day? And and uh, you, these are the answers you come up with. And those, those are all good, right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that engineering and architecture and medicine aren't good things. They're they're wonderful you things. You left out accounting. You left out accounting. So what you're saying is it's not. Okay, I get it. I get it. Uh, I uh, I have two account- daughters who are accountants. So uh, Lord have I, mercy I on them. Shouldn't leave that one out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, and those are all good, right? Those are all good things. But what we need to do is get kids to start looking up a little more and say. Is that the end of reality? Is is the end just to build more bridges and and create more profit and loss statements and uh, you know design more computers and faster computers and cure more diseases? And again, those are good things, but that's not our end, right? Our end is unity with God, and so maybe we ought to be lifting our eyes a little bit and seeing what God is telling us through math. And so if you can think of like looking straight horizontally, let's call that zero degrees, and now looking straight up, right, uh, you know, metaphorically, of course, uh, 90 degrees that, you know, looking at ignoring the world completely and looking almost, you know, directly to God. You know, there's a few mystics, right, who are at that kind of angle of elevation and cloistered nuns who are, you know, very, very close to that kind of thing. But I think for most people, uh, most people, the answer is somewhere in between. And what I'm trying to do is get people to think uh, above zero, right? Can we at least start looking at what God has revealed to us through math and the beauty that you see there? Uh, There are so many beautiful things in math. And if you just focus on the practical applications, you miss a lot of that. And I, I often talk to engineer friends at work, right? And, and some of them get it. Some of them really appreciate the beautiful parts of it and we have these great conversations others are like yeah but what is it good for and these are the kinds of people who would walk into the sistine chapel and say you know if michelangelo had uh had had used a roller he could have gotten that ceiling done in a lot less time yeah and uh, that's true you if you're if all you're trying to do is cover a ceiling with paint uh hiring a great artist uh, to 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 work on it for years is a okay 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 so i want to say something yeah Speaking of Michelangelo and the beautiful yeah. uh, painting where he God is reaching out to touch Adam, yep. there's something they say that is there in that painting called the Fibonacci um, uh, uh, equation. You know that? Can you? Do you, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Have you have you yeah, heard yeah. that? Uh, yeah, I have. Can it's, you it's, please it's, explain it's, it to people like me yeah, what that yeah, is? Yeah, I can explain that. Sure, sure. And so it's a, there's a very interesting uh, question that was asked. Uh, I would think around the year 1200. And um, the question is this, uh, if you have a male and female pair of rabbits in January, okay, they're born in January, they take a month to mature, and then in March, they have a male-female pair every month, okay, after that. And then um, those babies take a a month to mature, and then they start having a male-female pair every month. And, and and so on and so on and so on. The question is, how many do you have at the end of a year? And the person who solved that was a guy named Fibonacci. Um, and he, he figured this, this the solution to this. And what's very, very interesting is that 
not that has the, the, the rabbits. I mean, who cares, right? It's kind of a silly little problem. But here's the, the sequence that you end up using. So uh, one, one, two is how it starts. And then one and two is three. Two and three is five. Three and five is eight. Five and eight is 13 and so forth. And what ends up happening is that the further you go out, the more the ratio becomes 1.6 roughly, okay? Which is interesting. It's one, it turns out to be 1.618033988749895, et cetera. Hey, that's my Nobody phone number. Cares. You shouldn't be giving out my well, phone number. <laughs> that's right. I think I got your social security number in there too, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. But um, uh, yeah, so what it, it ends up being this number and it's 1.6180 who cares you know that's kind of a weird number well it turns out that number has some beautiful properties number one is very visually beautiful so if you if you uh, make a rectangle and you make the side lengths in that proportion people are actually drawn to that they've done scientific studies where people will say they'll say which of these uh, rectangles is the most beautiful rectangles and it turns out that it's the one where the ratio is about 1 to 1. 1.6 hmm. which is very interesting from a uh, uh, physiological perspective right. that that's the one that people like right, right? just yeah, the way our and brains so are wired if you look yeah. in art a lot of great art uh, they tend to use this this ratio over and over and over again sometimes it's unintentionally just because they think it looks nice and it turns out that what looks nice uh, happens to be in that ratio, and sometimes it's very intentional. Whether it was done in the uh, painting of God and and Adam, I don't know. Well, it looks a lot uh, like I, a, a, you know they say some seashells are consistent. Oh yeah, with them, yeah. And, so and it looks it year, almost looks like where God is is like almost oh, yeah. one of those seashells. Yeah, or also the, like the frame of the human of, mind. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of spirals in nature that that use this sequence: pine cones and pineapples and a lot of flowers use these kinds of of numbers and, it, and it's very interesting they call it the golden ratio and there's two things about it that i find fascinating number one is the the fact that that it is visually appealing right and people yeah. like that that seems to be kind of yes. a built-in thing but what else is appealing about it is no matter what two numbers you start with you will always get to that ratio. So forget about starting with one and one. Suppose we start with negative seven and positive 500. Very quickly, you'll get right to that 1.6180 ratio, no matter what you start with. And, did, what, and is that, what does that point to, to the beauty of God? I mean, the wonder well, of the Well, I Lord. think what it does is it, it does a couple of things. Number one, I think it's kind of a little... Um, it's a reflection of order in the mm. universe, right? Math is a reflection of the order. Well, where did that order come from, right? Where did that order come from? And number two, I think it's a reflection of how man is made in God's image. You know, when I was a kid, I thought, oh, what that means is that God must have uh, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, two ears, right? And the long beard. And that's, that's what it means when, no, that's not what it means at all. God has no physical body. Uh, you know, certainly, and, you know, of course, God the Son did, but um, when, when we talk about man being made in God's image, we're talking about the uniqueness of, of man relative to other creatures. So, for example, there's no two dolphins out here doing a podcast about the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio today, right? It's not something that uh, that dogs are doing or squirrels it's or it's the human or soul the, the not it's not absolutely. it's not the brain it's the it's the mind it's the soul the yeah. mind of the soul we're talking yeah, we're talking absolutely. with Doc, we're talking with uh, Brad Jolly he's uh our resident math uh, expert here on our show and um, we're going to get doc more about intelligent design and god's grandeur we come right back with more of the bear Wozniak adventure <laughs> People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel 
in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind you again, my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is out. And would love for you to uh, buy a book for your uh for your friends, I think every I think every woman will love this book. It's really it's practical advice, uh, uh, man to man, a uh, father to son. But also, I think women need to read this book too because it, it really, especially younger women, need to read this book. They understand the nature more of like you know. I think one of the great curiosities curiosities of a woman is trying to figure out a man, and uh, this kind of this kind of unpeels it a little bit and lets you see what it's all about. For example, some of the titles are A Man Needs to Be Dangerous. Another title, one of the chapter titles is A Man Needs to Have a Creed and then and then a Code He Can Live By. A Man Needs to Ride for the Brand. How a Man Treats a Woman Defines Him. Uh, and, and different titles like that. Don't, don't, uh, don't just pass through life. Have a purpose. Uh, so uh, all, I think this, this is a great book, a great read for everyone. Women, get this into your men's hands and be sure to read it yourself. 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Available any, everywhere books are sold and on our website, deepadventure.com. We really base this whole book on the life of Brad Jolie, our current guest. <laughs> He's a manly man from Colorado. And uh, there's nothing more manly than a mathematician. And so <laughs> we're having a great conversation. Talk, talk to me more about um, just the wonder of uh, what, yeah. how math, uh, the, bring, the, the intelligent design of math, how, how it brings us. You were talking about the, the nature of, of a, you know, an animal has a soul, according to uh, Aquinas and Augustine. It, you know, the sure. soul, even a plant, they say, has a soul. It's kind of the essence of its life. That's the philosophical way of looking at it. But man has a spiritual, rational soul. That's why we're made in God's image. Uh, we're not, you know, my, my, my daughter once said, well, my, even my, my cat's aware of itself. I could see it looking at itself in the mirror. It knows. It's sentient. Well, yeah, but it's not aware that it's aware. You know, uh, there's, there's, a, there's something in man that rises. Cats don't do math problems. Talk to us about the nature of man and how, what math, how math draws us. Towards. Yeah, so cats and rats, for example, will solve problems, right? Rats can go through mazes to, to find cheese, right? And and they're trying to solve problems. Even even, problems. even some fungus can do that. You know, have <laughs> exactly. you seen that? There's, they know that there's a certain yeah fungus or something. But what makes man unique, uh, among many other things, is we consider uh, and contemplate things that have no practical purpose, right? They're just beautiful in their own right. And if I've got about three minutes, I can give you an example. Yeah, just I want you to just take this whole this whole next seven minutes and just roll. Okay, all right. So there's a brilliant mathematician named David Hilbert, and uh, he he asked you to to consider a uh, hotel, and the hotel has a room number with every possible positive number one two three four five all the way up every positive integer. Um, you know, there's a room seven billion and six up there somewhere. And no matter how big the numbers are, it's an infinite hotel. There's a bigger one. Yeah. Yep. It's an infinite hotel. And uh, there's a guest in every single room. There's a guest. Guest one is in room one. Guest two is room two. Guest three is in room three and so forth. And so the sign out front's going to say no vacancy, right? Because every room is full. Then the Pope shows up and you can't kick anybody out, you can't double bunk any, and you can't build any more rooms, and all the rooms are full, can you accommodate the Pope? And Hilbert wasn't talking about the Pope, he just talked about some famous person, but we're gonna, we're on a Catholic show, so I can use the word Pope, I think. And so, how do you accommodate the Pope? 
can you accommodate the Pope given that every room is full? Well, yeah, you, you, the, the Hilbert's answer is yes, you can. All you do is you move the person from room one to two, from two to three, the person in three goes to four, the person in four goes to five and so forth. And now room one is available. If only the they knew that when, when they were looking for a place for Mary and Joseph to stay that night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure that they had an infinite hotel in Bethlehem, but uh, yeah, that that would have been good. Um, And so then the question is, well, the Pope travels with quite an entourage, as you might imagine, you know, security and uh, other priests and so forth. Not a problem. You just move the person in in room one to room 50, right? And then two goes to 51 and so forth. And now you've got uh, 50 rooms open or whatever for the Pope and his entourage. But then the question is, well, what if everybody loves this hotel so much that they all call a friend? What do you do then? Because you can't move somebody from room one to infinity plus one. That makes no sense. Well, the answer is you take the person in one and move them to two. Person in two goes to four, three goes to six, four goes to eight. So I'm just doubling, right? Everybody just doubles. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm moving everybody into the even numbers, right? One goes to two, two goes to four, three goes to six, four goes to eight, five goes to 10. Guess what? Now all my odd numbers are freed up. And so there's I an infinite every, amount of odd numbers too. Yeah, and there's an infinite, nut, right? So I can now, everybody can have a friend staying right next door to them. What if everybody calls a hundred friends? I oh, don't, man, what I don't have that many friends. I don't really have, have any, I, I don't really have any, but. So what if everybody calls 100 friends? No problem. You move the person from room one to 101, <laughs> two to 202, three to 303, and so forth. And, and you can keep doing this all day long regardless. And a couple of things. Number one, that's kind of cool. It's just beautiful to think about. Tough to get room number service, two, though. Tough to have that many. Number two, it has absolutely zero practice application on earth there are no infinite hotels right the it's not like the people from marriott or hilton are calling me and asking me for to explain this to them because there are no infinite hotels right so so it's just beautiful and interesting and it's it's cool to the human being to uh contemplate but what i like to do when i tell this to kids i say this is kind of analogy an analogy that you can use for god's mercy so God has given us all a certain amount of mercy in our life, right? And uh, he's done this not just for you and for me, uh, but for every sinner who's ever lived, right? Does that mean that if I sin tomorrow, God's going to go, you know what? I've run out. Uh, Brad, you're just out of luck. I've got no mercy left for you. I've run out. No. Even though God's mercy has been used for every single person, there's an infinite amount more that can be added to it, right? Even though even though he's already ex- given us an infinite amount of grace and mercy uh, and, and godly love and so forth, there's still an infinite amount more to give, right? And it's just like these hotel rooms. At the beginning of the, our little thought experiment, the sign said no vacancy, right? Everything was full. And yet we had room for the Pope. We had room for the Pope's entourage. We had room for a hundred friends of everybody in the hotel. And so this is kind of uh, an analogy. It doesn't, you know, totally exhaust the problem of God's infinite mer- mercy. I'm not claiming that, but it's kind of an analogy that you can use to start thinking about it and going, you know, wow. Infinity well, you know, it, really it's an interesting amazing. thing because back in and the Catholic Church doesn't call it abundant grace. They call that super abundant grace. Yes. But when you think about it, it used to be back in the day, way back in the back back in the day some of the um some of the uh people that would were going to be con- become converts didn't get baptized until later in their lives especially those that were warriors uh and they would wait and they would wait and get baptized late in life because they thought well once i get baptized i better not sin ever again it was wrong thinking on their part you know yeah. the baptism frees us from from original sin but then that but then we have the sacrament of confession that not only uh, brings us God's mercy, but also that that super abundant grace. Uh, you know, the in the Old Testament, the uh, Ark of the Covenant, which is probably me. What if that's a one point six thing? I don't know. But the Ark of the Covenant had uh, 
the law of Moses inside of it. But above it were the two angels with their wings spread forward, and that's called the mercy seat. So uh, yep. God's mercy is, is, is above his judgment. I've heard it said that God's mercy, uh, justice, the song of justice is played out in the key of mercy. We got one more minute. Give us, give us one more uh, math. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Yeah. One, one minute. Yeah, the only other thing I would like to invite people to consider is uh, look into fractals, which are really beautiful shapes. Uh, and you don't need to understand the math behind them. You can just go in and just look at them. And, and just see how awesome and beautiful they are. So just get on your internet search engine and uh, just just uh, search for the word fractals. How do you spell it? Uh, F-R-A-C-T-A-L-S. Okay. All right, that's, your, that's everybody's homework assignment. I want you guys to yeah. do that. But they're, and then they're, comment, when you're, if watch it on YouTube, you can comment below. Yeah, they really are beautiful and uh, Again, it's it's not there's not any practical application necessarily, uh, but wow, it's beautiful. It's kind of like looking up at the stars, right? Yes. You know, you just look up at the stars, or you look out uh, at the ocean waves crashing, right? And you know, sure, ocean waves crashing, you can surf. I, I know you have a little bit of experience in that, right? But uh, let's suppose you're not going to surf. Is it cool just to look out at Beautiful. the ocean waves and the stars, right? You know, you, just look, not for any practical application, but just for beauty and beauty. It, go, it goes back to that basic, uh, the the elements of man, the upward yearning for justice and for truth, uh, for uh, for love. Uh, but there's this element of mankind that has a desire for beauty. All the transcendentals, right? Yeah. Justice, beauty, love, truth, goodness, home, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, a little bit of Father Robert Spitzer mingled in there with our conversation. I'm sure you love, a love lot. him. Yes. <laughs> We're talking with Brad Jolie. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, everybody, that's your math assignment for the week. Uh, you, you, you've, you've gone to your math class, and now you can go back to being normal people. Thank you, Brad, for joining us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.